And we're back with some more prison architect. And, well, since the last episode, I may have done a little bit of testing on the side just to see how things work. This is the result of all that testing. And, yep, yeah, it's, it's, it, the results are just terrible. Absolutely terrible. We have designed this prison just completely wrong. But that's sort of the joy. It's like when you play Oxygen Included or RimWorld or anything like that. The first few bases always suck. And then you demolish them, or get demolished, and then you replace them with something better. However, they have done something in this game that makes it far more pleasant when you realize that, you know, you've made your things horribly wrong and you're going to have to rebuild everything from scratch. You can actually just go in here and you can sell your whole prison. It keeps a prison valuation of how much your prison costs. And so long as you haven't done anything crazy like, uh, let's see, had any recent debts or escapes. So if the place starts to fall apart, you've had a massive riot, lots of prisoners are dead, and you're like, oh, I'd like to just quit and start again. No, 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 you can't do it then. You have to do it when things are going good. <laughs> so it's like, it's a good method and kind of like a kick in the nuts if you've messed up. Imagine getting really far, having a very expensive prison and watching the whole thing burn down in flames and being not able to do anything about it. And having to start from very little money then. Mm, well, not going to worry about it. What we're going to do is we're going to sell this attempted prison and we're going to start on a better one. And this will give us a whole bunch of extra starter cash. This is sort of the joy of it. We get all of this starter cash when we start up our next prison, so we can skip a whole bunch of the boring stuff we did last time. Well, not so much boring, or the learning section. Now, there is one thing I wanted to change. Permanent day. It never gets dark in your prison. It's as bright at midnight as it is at noon. It's just, this is handy for making videos. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see what's going on during the nighttime sections. We're going to leave everything else the same. Now, there is a whole section here on whether or not you can have forests and things like that, but we don't want to go the wood route. There's a whole wood route where you can use wood to chop stuff down and make a lot of money that way. We want to, like, squeeze our money out of prisoners. That's sort of the point of the game, so let's just try that at least at least to the first time round. All right, let's play this. All right, so now we start off with 450 grand. This is perfect. Then we get to design the prison a bit better. I'm going to put in some ghost walls and try and roughly figure out where we're going to be planning the next bajillion tons of base. After far, far too much time humming, hawing, and planning, 100 prisoners in this block right here. 100 prisoners in this block right here. Uh, these sections down here are going to be filled with things like chapels or random junk that I can't remember that we're probably going to need, but I haven't actually figured into the plans. Canteen, kitchen, uh, whoa, what was that one again? I don't want to say laundry. Yard, that was it. Canteen, kitchen, yard. Then we're still going to need to have a visitor's room, laundry, uh, common room, a few other bits and bobs. So we either fit them in there or there. I'm going with the whole pick a size and then figure it out afterwards method because otherwise you just get stuck in that analysis paralysis problem. So we'll figure it out as we go. At worst case scenario, you know, some prisoners right and we have to beat a few heads. It'll be grand. Now... Over here, let's just start the building and I'll explain it as we go. First up, we're going to grab the two basics. We're going to get basic detention sensor and we're going to grab the administration center. Both of those need to be done pretty early on and this is going to be our basic detention. It says it has to be at least a 5x5, five five, but if I make it a 4x16, does that also work? So we're just going to fill in this early bits here. All we want to do is get ourselves down a detention center and a little bit of an office. In fact, give us the doors. And the thing is, you can turn the doors to actually line up with the walls, but every time I place a door the wrong way, someone screams somewhere. So let's just do it that way and line up all of these doors arseways on every single one of these every time, just for funs, funsies. So the basics go in. We got ourselves a holding cell with a bench, a toilet, and a shower. We've got ourselves three offices. Well, we only need two. Then we get along to hiring an actual warden, which should just be a case of chucking one down. There, you can have that office. Perfect. Once the warden's down, we can start researching finance. And once we get the finance person in, we can hire them and that will knock out the administration center. Okay, but for the holding cell, to complete it, we actually need to get a few other things. We need a shower, a yard, a canteen, a kitchen, a bunch of other junk. In fact, I think we're just going to stick together a sort of a temporary shower and then rip it out. We only want it temporarily. So I think we'll put in the war yeah, we'll put in the full size yard and a few other bits and bobs because well why not? We got the we got the money that we can start splurging a little bit this early on. Now we could hire more construction workers to make this faster, but I think we'll just do it this way. We're gonna complete this fairly fast and how is your research going? Ooh, we've already got that done. You know what? Give us uh, the extra grant stuff. You can do that once we've got you. We're also going to need maintenance so we can get our hands on some janitors. We're going to be going straight into security. We've got the money to start hammering these out much faster. Oh, and where was it? Yes, give us that finance accountant. Uh, you can go over there. Done. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, research has started. Research has started. They'll be finished in no time at all. And soon we'll have this place finished and we can claim that second grant. Though... We're going to go slow here. I want to show you some of the things I've learned about prisoner management, and it's, um, it's strange enough. You'll see as we go. 
Uh, quick shower room right here. We're not actually going to keep that one. We're going to put showers in the prisoners' cells just to make our lives easier. So this shower thing is just temporary. Uh, down here we've got canteen, kitchen, yard. Now we just got to stick in the required resources to make them those buildings. And this is our, well, okay, a little bit overpopulated kitchen, canteen, and the yard here. We're not really going too crazy on it. And this will all start to become more clear as we start looking at the needs of prisoners. Prisoner needs are weird. I was really expecting... More differences from them, but uh, you, you will find out as we put them in. First, we're going to put in uh, 10 cells. Actually, we'll put in 20 cells. We'll put in 20 cells, we'll take on 10 prisoners, and then we'll show, slowly show you how all of their different needs change, depending on how we tweak their cells and their surrounding environment. So, oh, uh, let's see, we're probably going to wall in. I'm walling in a few extra places as well, just to make sure we get no escapes. Escapes are just annoying, and I don't want anyone escaping this time around. This is our, well, wall-in system. We've got a big wall going around the outside to make sure the prisoners can't get out, and then there's staff doors here to make sure they can't get out, so they should be trapped into this small area. We also have a large jail door there, a large jail door there, and a double staff door. Staff doors they can't pass through, which means if they want to get out, they're going to have to, like, go through here or tunnel their way out. All right, uh, for the time being, this is going to be their janky prison cells. Now, I was trying to figure out about prison cell quality and all this stuff, namely because if you go under objects and, say, put in cell, it gives you this thing where it says a normal bed is whatever, but a, say, a comfy bed improves a cell's grade or improves a dormitory's grade. I was wondering what all this grade stuff was on about. However, let's just say we grab this and we go, we'll turn those all into prison cells. Done, we now have space for 10 prisoners. Let's go and have a look at the grade of these rooms by going into room quality. And you will notice that this is where all the stuff comes into room quality. It's got a grade of 0 out of 15 because we've got an old bed, we've got no windows, room size has to be at least 6 squares. There's all this stuff you can do. And then I found out none of it matters. Right here under policy you've got use cell quality ratings. So... No, that's off by default and we're kind of going with the default settings unless we have a reason to change them. For example, we're going to use allow staff keys later, but that's a, a different story. So I'm not even sure why this is here, what it's for, or what it helps with. But as far as I can tell, it doesn't matter how bad the cell quality is. It doesn't seem to have any effect on the prisoner's mood. So cheapy beds and toilets it is. Now, there's another stupid thing you can do here, which uh, I'm not sure if it's an exploit or not. But let's just go to cell. And we want to put in a shower into this room. So what we're going to do is grab a shower head, which sticks to the ceiling. And we're going to put it above the toilet. Yep, we just put a shower head right above the toilet. Now that might cause problems because it'll flood the room, so we can just put a drain below the toilet. It's the maximum inefficiency here. They can do both things at the same... Well, okay, they can't do both things at the same time. Or, well, they theoretically could, but I don't think the game allows them to. Anyway, that means you can, inside the room, cram in a toilet, a shower, and the drain all in one spot, in one tile, taking up minimal space, which is just handiness. This means we don't need a dedicated shower room, and since we don't need a dedicated shower room, that just makes our lives simpler. Alright, uh, then we have to hire at least two guards and two cooks, and then we're going to let this run for a bit, and we're going to show the needs of the prisoners and how they change over time. Two guards, uh, two cooks, and that's knocked out that requirement. Now we're going to take on ten prisoners. Just ten, and then from there we'll sort of show their needs. We could take on far more right now, we just we would make things more complicated to explain. Uh, we will go entirely with mid-sec prisoners, if you wouldn't mind. We will go to total prisoners, and we'll make that 10. And we're going to set the in arrival intake for... Ooh, actually, can we change that here? Yeah, we're going to change that to about 4... Or, yeah, 3 in the morning. 3 in the morning means none of our people should be busy, all the prisoners should be locked down, we shouldn't have any problems uh, in integrating them into the general population. If everyone is currently asleep, they can't be causing trouble. Well, that's the theory. Actually, considering the time of day, let's just... Crank them in now. Uh, yeah, we can afford to bring them in right now. In 59 minutes? Yep. We'll bring them in 59 minutes. We'll change that back to 1 o'clock in the morning once the first group comes in. Okay, and now here's where we're going to be applying some other stuff quite shortly. All of these doors have locked. Uh, the prison doors, the staff doors, all of those have locked down because there's now prisoners so that it has to be worried about. And here's the problem. When people want to get through these doors, uh, they can't. Like, workers and all that will have to wait, uh, kitchen staff, all that stuff. See, there's our two janitors, and they can't leave until a guard comes and opens the door for them. However, there's a quick way around this. Under policy, we've got that allow staff keys. This gives them the keys so that they can open the doors. However, I do believe this makes it easier for prisoners to get a copy of the keys, so swings and roundabouts. But for now, we're just going to let everyone have keys, and we'll fix that in just a minute, once we've got all the prisoners loaded up. Under prisoners, we have needs right here. Oh, uh, wait, what do we need for this? 
Ah, we had to hire a psychologist first. Once you get access to a psychologist, you can get access to needs. Right. So once you've got access to needs... Oh, and I made sure the psychologist was in here. I've been advised that the, the psychologist needs to have access to the prisoners so that he can do some one-on-one -on -one sessions with them later on. That I haven't really gotten too deep into, but that's why his office is in here and everyone else has offices safely behind some locked doors. All right. So you can see here, as these... Uh, as they're all sleeping at night, their sleep is going down as their need is being fulfilled, and their hygiene is going up. That's because they're sweating in their sleep or something? I don't know, I don't use a heavy duvet when I'm sleeping. I prefer a lighter duvet, otherwise you wake up all sweaty. I, I don't get that. Never mind. These guys, once they wake up in the morning, which is right about now, they're going to need to take care of their needs. So a bunch of them are either going to use the bathroom, which bladder empty, and then hygiene, which is showers. So they can take care of all of that in their room. And then when they're finished, they get let out. And we've got a regime here of what they do during the day. Shower, lock up, free time, lock up. There's all this stuff going on. We're going to change this entire regime real quick. There we go. So, first thing in the morning, they're going to wake up and be locked in their cells. That'll force them to use the bathroom and the showers if they've got time. Then they have free time for the rest of the day until about 1 p.m. Then it's eat, more free time, then eat, and then lock up for an hour before bedtime. This is, well, I stole this. From this Reddit article by Merrill Sheep from about two years ago. It's a pretty good guide. It's uh, 24 pages long, gives you a good overview. It's just finding a good overview of Prison Architect was really hard, and I've modified several of the things in here because, well, you never do things the same way as everyone else. We're all a little bit different, aren't we? Anyway, during their free time, these prisoners are going to want to wander through here and do all of their take care of all of their needs. Namely, food is, well, that only happens at canteen time. There's exercise, which they can get using a variety of little things around the place. Uh, there's family, which requires them to meet with their family, which is, means we're going to have to put in a little room for that. We'll take care of that in a minute. Uh, the recreation, that requires... Oh, you know what? Let's just start doing this stuff now, and you can see it as we go. First up, we're going to crank up the UI so that people can see what's going on a little bit better. Second off, we're going to go under objects, and the best one we're going to start with is the punching bag. This improves the cell's grade, improves the gymnasium's grade, improves the yard's grade, but we don't really care about that. What we care about is it caters to the exercise and recreation needs. So here's recreation, here's exercise, and that's a twofer. And we can cram that in their cells. You see, the main thing we're trying to do here is stop them interacting as much as possible. The more prisoners interact, the more likely they are to punch each other in the face and shank each other in the guts. So what we want to do is, say, put a punching bag right there. We are going to put a punching bag in every single one of their cells. This way, we don't have to worry about, they don't have to go into the yard to get that exercise. Great for us. Now, the moment we put that in, that should take care of their exercise and recreation. So, let's speed up time, get the builders in there, and they can take care of it. And here they come now. Boop, 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 boop. And, and you want to, oh, come on, seriously, you got a new toy in your cells and none of you want to use them? Yeah, they'll take care of it in a minute. Okay, then. When they have free time, they're allowed to use this however they want. That's why we're putting these in their cells. They'll use it at some point in the future. Let's just give it a minute. Oh, there's one of them now. Uh, prisoner, whatever they're using in the showerhead, you can see here exercise and recreation are going to get knocked out. Uh, they've also got the option to use these weight benches, but I'd prefer them not all to be using that. The more they spread it out and the more less likely they are to shank each other in the guts. Oh, and this is starting to get annoying. It's slowing down the prisoner movement when we have to get guards over there. So now we're going to use the security system. Now, to unlock this next bit, you have to go in here and you have to research remote access. Oh, and we're going to actually open up CCTV while we're in here. And maybe bank loans, even though we don't need it. And legal, even though we don't need it just yet. But once we've got that, we've got this room down here, which we have left vacant for uses that shall become apparent. Let's go under utilities and wiring. Yes, inside here. Door control system. Perfect. Uh, we will put you right there. In fact, we're going to get a CCTV monitor as well. We're going to need one of those in a bit. Why not? And we're going to get a phone tap because... Yeah, we're pervy that way. So let's grab all three of them in there, and then let's make sure that we've got the utility power in there to keep them all running. And I'm pretty sure they're going to require some power wires, so let's just start building them in now. Yep, yeah, yeah kind of figured. Doesn't matter, lots of power wires, you'll be grand. Okay, uh, we've only got two guards. Now, again, we're not making money here right now. We are, um, we're only running ten prisoners. We could be running more. We're just keeping it small and light so that we can make changes. All right, now that we've got those in, we have to make a few a few other changes. Uh, you, phone tap, we'll leave you off for not the time being. Oh, great, we can't turn them off. Mind, I'm just going to have to order more staff to just take care of these, otherwise it'll cause problems. Yeah, there we go. But we're going to start hooking up the doors. The thing is, you can't just hook up the doors directly. You need to install some stuff first. So we're going to go back under wiring, and we're going to find ourselves a dir door server. Servo. Did I say dir server? Uh, these things are weird. Find which way the gate opens. 
and then you want to put the block on where the wall is, and then the gear on where the door rolls back into. And then we want to go back here, same thing, this door opens back in here, so we want to put that door servo there. And finally, one more over there. I'm pretty sure that's all of them. In fact, ooh, actually, we have one over here as well we can grab. And I think that is all the jail doors. You might notice now that we haven't used jail doors in any of our cells. We, we don't need to. They're all walled in here. We, we don't care if they break out of their cells, to be honest. They'll still be trapped inside this area. So this just saves us money. Jail doors cost, well, a lot of money. As in about 200, a regular door costs 50. I'm willing to save 150 bucks if I don't have to worry about the prisoners doing anything. Maybe with the maximum security stuff this becomes a problem, but we're just going with medium security. Anyway, we've got that installed. We want to make sure it's got power going to it. We sh Normally, I feel you have to hook up a power wire directly to these things. It's kind of annoying, but once that's hooked up, perfect power there. Though, for some strange reason, they don't really show it all the time. Uh, this is the door server. We are going to connect it right back to... No, a CC door control system. Uh, we also have one over here. We're going to connect you to the door control system. And we have one over here. Door control system. And done. Why is that not... Oh, damn it. I'm going to run another power wire one second. All right, done. Now what happens is this. These doors are controlled by this person standing at the door control subsystem. So if anyone wants to get in or out, they can actually trigger it. This means we can now go back in here, go under policy, and get rid of allowing staff members' keys. Because so long as there's someone there, those doors will always open. See, that janitor was able to escape out that door even they, though they don't have a key anymore. This just simplifies things, and every time you add in more of these doors... Now, there is limits. This guy can only open two doors a second or something along those lines, so you can't be putting thousands of doors on this guy, or even hundreds. But a few amount of doors seems to work just fine. Oh, a couple other things. Staff doors are listed here in the kitchen. We don't want the actual prisoners getting in here because they will steal stuff out of the kitchen. That's why there's staff doors, which means only staff can get in here. Regular doors on the canteen, regular doors on the yard hall, and regular... Oh, and staff doors on the psychologist's office. Though we probably should start using him for more stuff. Anyway, needs-wise, let's have a quick look and see what's going on in here. You'll notice that hygiene, sleep, bowels, bladder, all of that's taken care of. Exercise, family, we'll worry about family in a minute, but recreation, comfort, environment, privacy, freedom. We do have to get along to clothing in a bit. But that leaves alcohol, spiritual, liter literature, and luxuries. Now, luxuries is a bit of an odd one. What we can do is go get a pet bird, a tiny companion to keep your inmate's company caters to family, comfort, and luxuries needs, which... Yeah, um, let's just stick that in the middle of the room. And we'll put one of those in every single cell. Costs 150 bucks, but if it takes care of their luxury needs and it helps a little bit with their family needs, that seems like a pretty good bargain. Right, they're up and about. Let's see, this guy here, safety and hygiene. Now they're all showering. One second. Uh, this guy over here. We can watch under needs and hygiene and spiritual. Ah, safety and hygiene. Ah, damn it. One of you stands still closer. Ah. Family and luxury. You see the way it's in the green? That means it's being catered to because they're standing near that thing. I don't know what the... I don't know if it's only in adjacent tiles or standing on top of it, but it seems to work. And if we check under here, we can see luxuries is actually... Their luxury want, which is the yellow bar, is going down. Uh, family should also be taken care of as well. But, hey, works out. Now, we still have space for one more thing in there. We're going to leave that for a minute because first we have to take care of the prisoners wandering around the place in these big open areas that we sealed off. It seems if they want to go somewhere, you see, the guards will let them there so long as the area is still walled in. So even though we've got staff doors here, they're like, yeah, sure, go on in there. Do whatever you want, buddies. No. So I'm thinking staff only for here, staff only for there, uh, staff only for the kitchen, and... Yeah, I'm thinking staff only. No, that's actually got to go. Oh, actually, wait. No, I should make that for anyone. Otherwise, we can't get prisoners into, into here. Oh, and this shower can go. We don't need it anymore. Right, shower gone. We'll convert that room in a minute. But for now, this phone booth over here, we want to connect it up to the phone taps. Uh, that way, if they do anything, we might get any warnings of them, you know, arranging some annoying junk. Uh, then we've got a CCTV monitor. Let's just set up some CTV surveillance. Uh, give us an object. Grab us ourselves a CCTV camera. Now, these don't seem to need to be placed anywhere. You can just chuck them down pretty much anywhere. So I usually like to put one in the canteen. Uh, stick one in the kitchen just in case. One in the yard. Uh, then we like to have one here just viewing the entire hallway down this section. And then I usually stick one down here. Oh, actually, we'll stick one down there as well. Done. 
Then once they're down, we have to make sure they're powered and then we have to run connector cables from them to the CCTV monitors. This allows us to, ooh, excellent, come on. And you see that sort of whitish glow? That's areas covered by the CCTV camera. Then we just connect them up to, again, same thing. I don't know why this isn't automatic, but it is what it is. This allows you to pinpoint problems before they happen and your guards can rush in and hopefully stop things before they escalate. So we will have to power up a few of these. The next thing we got to deal with is contraband because those prisoners, you just know they're full of stuff. Let's do a quick uh, lock shakedown. Uh, all sectors. Yeah, here we go. So they're going to go and look for every, pla every place that there might be potential contraband stored, which is storage rooms, prisoners rooms, the kitchen, the canteen, pretty much everywhere. Oh, they found a knife. Yep, someone stole something. Uh, they're going to find more as they go along. So we need to make sure to minimize this as much as possible. And doing this thing where we shake down everyone, it causes problems because the prisoners don't like it. Getting harassed for no reason, that irritates them a little bit. All right. Once this is all finished, four mobile phones, uh, one medicine and a knife. Now, what's the last place? Done. Perfect. Well, time to get our security underway. So for that, we want to go under objects, metal detectors. And there's a two part plan to this. Hey, you want to put two metal detectors, say, right here. That means all the prisoners coming out of this area have to pass through a metal detector. Problem solved on that front. Then we, what we want to do is put two metal detectors here. All resources brought into the prison have to pass through the metal detectors. We could also put it up there, but eh, actually, that might be a better idea. Yeah, much better. So, two metal detectors over there, two metal detectors over there. Now that will take care of weapons, metal things, spiky, stabby stuff, all that sort of thing. Let's make sure we got enough power for this as well. Uh, we're going to have to probably plug them in. But any any prisoners with that, like, get caught carrying stuff will get stopped and frisked. They basically go through that, it pauses them, little question mark appears in them, and then they get caught up by a guard and the guard takes the stuff up. It's like, police. We call the police guards in Ireland. I'll probably have done that a few times before. Apologies. All right. Then there's the second part. Drugs, alcohol, and the smelly stuff. Now, for that, you need the canine units. Canines are researched under here, under dogs. And that's why we left this area here. So... Staff-wise, let's grab ourselves down a couple of dog handlers. Nice. Okay, so Hans and Keenan. Now, we need to give them a room or a kennel for they can stay in because they will get tired after a while. But first, we're going to set them up a little patrol route. So, deployment. This... Oh, you don't have access to patrol routes early on. Uh, you're going to have to research them. Uh, it's over here, patrols. Yeah, you're pretty much going to want to research all the stuff in here. And it's not really that expensive. Well, once we... We'll get into how you make lots of money later. But for now, we're going to put ourselves down a quick patrol... Uh, grab us a patrol here, make it a blue patrol. Uh, deployment time blocks. Yeah, I, I'm not going to care about that. And then what we'll do is we will have them deployed across there. Uh, then we will assign dog handlers. We're just going to assign one. So there will always be one dog handler there. And here they come. And they start patrolling back and forth. If anyone tries to sneak some drugs past, alcohol, any kind of contraband that's smelly, they get caught by the dog handler. If they try to sneak anything metal past, they get caught by the metal detectors. This should vastly cut down on the amount of junk getting in here. Now, do remember, though, like, if they have access out here, they can get thrown stuff over the wall. So, prisoners will call people on the phone, those people will then show up in the next 24 hours and then throw stuff over the wall. And they are Olympic-level throwers. They will throw that stuff, like, 9 metres, stuff like that, over the wall, 9 metres in, and the prisoners will go out and collect it. So, we need to be pretty careful about that. So, occasionally, you're going to have to go out and rip up their beds and figure out and raid all of their police or raid all of their rooms. However, we also have a problem with tunnels. These guys are going to start digging tunnels after a while. They always start in the toilets, but we'll do more on that later. And the dog handlers will be important for that. However, you'll see dogs getting tired. We need a place to keep the dog. So we are going to make this into the dog kettle. There we go. Little doggos grabbing a nap. And this means anyone that comes into the prison has to go through the dog kennels. So they have to pass through metal detectors, then through the dog kennels, full of the dogs that can sniff drugs and contraband, and then they get into the prison. But before that, no. So as we expand, we're going to be adding in more and more dogs. So this place should become a nice place to not be if you are anyone trying to smuggle illegal stuff in. That's the theory. We'll see how well it works. Uh, yep, uh, perfect. See, that prisoner was able to pass right through those doors. We know they don't have any metal stuff on them. And unfortunately, our two dogs are exhausted because we didn't get the kennels down in time. I had to rebuild the whole thing. But there they are back at it again. They'll find some drugs and contraband in no time at all. All right, money-wise, cash flow here. There's an important little bit here. Days without incident. The longer you go without an incident, the more bonus money you get. And this can really, really start to add up, especially as more and more stuff into your cells. 
Actually, let's just check the needs. And to make sure that they don't have incidents, you need to take care of as many of their needs as possible. So right now, literature, spirituality, alcohol, clothing, um, they're the main ones we want to take care of. I think clothing-wise, we're probably going to want to stick ourselves together one of those uh, laundry mats. Before we can take care of any more of their needs, we got a problem with this prisoner over here. They have been assigned to solitary for the next two hours, and until we get them into solitary, they seem to be just going to be handcuffed in their room for a bunch of time. This is because they got caught through here with either drugs or contraband of some sort, and there are penalties assigned out for this. Ah, here we go. Policy. Destruction. Lockdown for one hour. Uh, where is it? Attack staff. Solitary for two hours. Serious injury. Solitary for four hours. Intoxication. Solitary two hours. So we need to get ourselves some solitary cells up and running, and we're going to put a few together over here. Uh, you guys, speed it up a bit. Okay, and I think the... Yeah, I think the actual UI is about the right size, so if people prefer it smaller or larger, just let me know. Solitary cells are pretty straightforward, except I've started using jail doors on these. I figure if they're in solitary, they might be a little bit more violent, so having a tough door to keep them contained? Probably a smart idea. Now, one of the downsides of trying to make the putting in cell doors, these guys can't get in, the workmen. So we could give them keys again, or instead, when we're doing construction, we just hit uh, lock open. We can do this manually. All the doors are locked open, they can get in there and do all the construction they need. Oh. And we're going to need to floor this place as well. Give me some foundation right there. Yep, concrete, please. As you can see, our prisoner is still locked in cuffs because, well, they've been assigned to solitary, and until we get them a solitary cell, they're kind of stuck that way. All right, we are going to close all these doors again. All you have to do is just click on the lock open and it will reverse. Then under rooms, we grab solitary and... Done. All you really need for solitary is a toilet. That is... We put in a shower as well, just to be extra safe. And there's them being brought in. Perfect. And you're locked in there, buddy. Two hours in there, and once you're finished, you'll be free to go back to your normal cell. All right, where were we? Ah, yes. Needs. This is the most important part of it. Clothing. We need to get ourselves a laundry real quick. Um, Now, this is where my planning has kind of fallen down. I wasn't really sure where I'm going to put in the laundry, so let's just chuck in one down here. We'll probably have to move it later, but I just want to start knocking all the needs out. And clothing seems like an easy one. Well, that's laundry done. All we need is a couple of laundry machines, a couple of ironing boards, and a few of these laundry baskets. We've made it really small. It should hopefully be able to support about 100 population. Now, this guy over here has triggered the metal detector. You see he's got that hourglass symbol on him, or the magnifying glass. That means they're about to investigate him. And what do you got, buddy? Um, I have no idea what he got done for, but he triggered the alarm somehow. And that's basically what the metal detectors do. Either that or drugs from the dog handler. All right. With that done, that should take care of clothing. Maybe not now. It takes a little bit of time for them to get around to that. It leaves us with alcohol, spiritual, and literature. This is where we're going to get a little bit controversial. You don't need to actually take care of spiritual and literature, but it's probably a good idea to handle them. So we're going to go with... You have two options here, but first what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of literature by putting some stuff into their cells. Bookshelf. It's tiny. It costs 30 bucks. Uh, yep, right about there. We'll put them all the way across. And once they're installed, that should completely take care of their liter literary needs. Done! Little bookshelf installed. Uh, where is it? Literature. Okay, it's gone down a little bit, but that should continue to plummet. Now we have one other thing we need to take care of, and that is spirituality. Again, you don't definitely need to take care of this, but the more of their needs that you take care of, the less likely they are to turn violent, which is good, because that's what hurts your money the most. So spirituality here, you can make yourself a church, but you run into a few problems when you start coming into these areas. For example, library. Library here requires a 5x5 five five room. Fine, it's indoors, library shelf, sorting desk, all of that stuff is attainable. However, prisoners will need to sort these books into shelves. As far as I'm aware, you need to actually have your prisoners trained up to work in the library, and that requires other buildings and stuff, which is an awful lot of effort. Just sticking in one of these bookcases seems to, well, mean you don't need a library at all, you don't need to train anyone up. Perfect. Then there's chapel. Now the chapel is a little bit better in that it only requires a 6x6 six six room. However... We don't really have the space for that right now, so I figure we don't really need a church. Instead, what we can do is go into objects, go to prayer mat, and as long as you've got a prayer mat, you can place them pretty much in any room. But we're going to stick a, well, one, two, three, four along there, say another three there, another three there. What this will allow the prisoners to do is go and pray there, which should feed their spiritual needs. So that should get rid of spiritual and literature. 
and clothing. Uh, we still got alcohol, though, to go. And, well, we also have to worry about drugs in a bit. But we'll take care of that in a wee bit. Let's just let them install all this stuff. Ah, there we go. Someone's getting their prey on. And uh, that will reduce their spiritual uh, spirituality need. Orange is bad. Red is really bad. And yellow is like, oh, they'd like some, but they're not going to complain about it until it starts turning orangey. Uh, literature, well, it's only been early days yet. They'll get around to that in a bit. Spirituality seems to be more of a pressing concern for them at the moment. All right, uh, we're probably going to need to put down more prayer mats later, but we'll worry about that if, in due course. Okay, then we get into weird rooms that we're going to need, and that's going to bring us to programs. And this is where room design starts to become a little bit pr problematic. Okay, pharmacological treatment of drug addiction. It has 10 places, three sessions, led by a doctor in an infirmary. Each participant requires a medical bed. This gives you a problem. You see, there's 10 places in it, and each one requires a medical bed, which means if you're going to make an infirmary and you want to run the treatment of drugs in it, you should definitely put in 10 beds. If you don't have 10 beds, then you're running the sessions below size, which is inefficient and wastes money. So you want to make sure that your medical treatment facility has place for 10 beds. And, okay, alcoholic group therapy session. This has 20 places, and this is led by a psychologist in a common room. So your common room should have 20 seats for everyone. Uh, parole hearing, you need those as well, but just all of these things, they require you to have a certain amount of equipment in them to take maximum advantage, which is a bit complicated when you're doing it the first time round. All right, let's just put together a quick medical facility. Requires 10 beds. How hard can it be? We'll just throw one in. Right here should be good. Right, fairly straightforward. Now we just need a couple of doctors. In fact, I'm pretty sure there is some grants for a few of these things. Ah, there we go. Inmate health and well-being. All we need is a couple of doctors to fulfill that one. Oh, and that reminds me, we need to get a room on this. Grant complete. Perfect. That's 10 grand and we need a wall light. I discovered wall lights there a while ago and they are so much handier. You just get a wall light like this. You say chuck one there. Um, Actually, one of them should be sufficient. I can see now why people were requesting them so much when it came to RimWorld, because in RimWorld, you don't have wall lights. Uh, you continue on. Boom. Done. You will notice we are making very little money right here. Uh, that's because we've kept our prison population intentionally low, just sort of as for demonstration purposes. We definitely could have had way more prisoners by now. So, let's start uh, increasing our population supply just a wee bit. We've expanded the cells on, well, the exact same way. Done. And that allows us to go up to 10 or 20 people. In fact, we'll let's immediately bring in some more people right about now. I'm thinking 20 people. We can potentially handle them. Oh, and let's see our needs. How are we looking? Why is clothing so bad? We've already got 10 prisoners need clean clothing. We do have a laundry. Hmm. I think something's wrong with our laundry. I may need to make some changes to this. Give me a minute. Well, the laundry is not working. That is very frustrating, but I think I finally figured it out. What I wanted to do was floor this entire place in running track because it allows us to move much faster. But you can't put running track indoors, so I was leaving this whole place open. That was fine. However, it seems if the place is open, the laundry people can't do their thing. Hmm. Actually, we try a little something here. So it turns out this laundry system, no matter what you do, will not work unless there's foundations going between it and the cells. I've checked everything on this. Uh, if we check under logistics, you can check laundry distribution and it's set up to distribute to all the cells. Still doesn't. We also checked under prison labor and we have assigned people to the position. Uh, it doesn't make a difference if we assign zero or five or whatever, just does not work. The only thing that seems to work is building a foundation. I, yep, yeah, just one of those weird little quirks of the game. I really was looking forward to just building running track everywhere though. I thought that'd be a bit entertaining but never mind there we go the janitors are finally putting it <sighs> this takes so long or well, it took so long for me to figure that out okay uh, we're up to space for 30 prisoners we want to get up to 100 prisoners pretty quick and we should probably expand out our food and our tables here just to make sure there's enough dining space for everyone more tables more cookers more fridges everything all right, that should give everyone space for the new influx of people we're about to have, and time to double down. Problem though, oh, sometimes what I tried to try and do was copy-paste an entire wing. Problem was it would just swap our delivery sector because we don't have enough builders, so you want to try and build it just a little bit slower than max speed. As you can see, we have a Congo line of trucks ready to deliver supplies. This can get kind of annoying if, well, problematic if you can't get those resources off fast enough and you also need the food to feed all your prisoners. 
Uh, so you kind of do want to build things in a medium speed, or you're going to have to drastically expand your deliveries and storage area, which is another option, I suppose. Oh, and I should really hook up the security camera. So basically, we're just expanding out, and the reason we're doing that is well, money. Lots and lots of money. If you go days without incidents, it starts to crank up your bonus income, so this is where you really make your gravy. We're, we're making about three and a half grand a day, but most of that is coming from just not messing up. So long as no one escapes, we're doing good on this front. However, I'm taking a look at our needs here, and things are looking a bit suspiciously. Hmm... Okay, so 29 of them are sleeping right now, but when I'm looking down at some of these things, I don't like the looks of some of the numbers. All of them are not quite taking care of their literature and their luxuries, so I'm worried some of them are digging tunnels in their spare time. I think tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow we're going to do a quick search, a tunnel search, through all of the buildings, just to make sure we haven't found... Well, make sure no one's trying to make a break for it. We might have to do that a couple of times if they've got turrets going on, and we're going to expand our canine unit. In fact, we're going to grab... We're going to grab four more K9 units, and we're immediately going to set them up a patrol route. One that makes sure there's no more escapes, well, no potential escapes from tunnels. There is an absolutely massive patrol route. Uh, I have no idea if the dogs will be able to handle that, so we're going to assign one guard dog to this. And we'll probably have to add on some more. Oh, that is slow. Hmm. I wonder what happened if we gave them some running track to go on. Would that actually make them any faster? Well, it's worth trying. Uh, right now we're putting in piping, wiring, all sorts of stuff, but I think we can squeeze in just a little bit of running track while we're at it. Oh yeah, it helps. I can actually see it there as they were building the trail in front of them. Having that makes them go faster. That'll make the patrols a little bit quicker. We just gotta make sure we build enough running track ahead of them. Yeah, they don't need to get any deliveries to make a running track. That makes it so much faster. That was one of the things I wanted to do, was fill this entire area in here with running track. But it seems it messed with the laundry, so whatever. I'll do some playing around on the side and see if we can't find some sort of a version of it that we can get running. Uh, this guy's patrolling around the outside, and these dogs, they can find tunnels. So it'll paw at the ground if it finds tunnels and leaves flags behind. For now, we don't have to worry too much, I don't think, but uh, I would like to keep an eye on it. Oh, and over here, finally, our water pipes have hit a limit. I was kind of curious what the limit was on water pipes. If you check here, we're going all the way to the section, but the moment it gets to here, it cuts off. I don't think there's enough water pressure once it gets to that point. So, I'm afraid it's... Yeah, all of you guys gotta go. Time for a quick tunnel search. We Basically, they dig from toilets. Um, that is just what they do. So you send all your guards around to have a look at the toilets. Now, normally you'd prefer to have some sort of indicator that there's something going on, but... Eh, we're still gonna search them all anyway, just in case. It's one of the few things that can get by you at this late stage is tunnels. Okay, I think we're good, but... The thing is, even if you search a toilet, you might not find the tunnel. There's only a percentage chance, so you might have to do it two or three times to make sure you nail it. All right, how are we looking? Uh, well, we got the prisoner bus coming in, but we're still unloading all of the resources required to make the new cells. Ah, uh, they'll get around to it. To speed up the production of the jail cells we've put in this rear racetrack, this allows all of our construction people to come in here and place this without having to pass through the main cell and expose themselves to the prisoners and potentially drop off weapons and things. So they just come in through here and pop up this section, but they still have to pass the metal detectors. So it kind of makes it faster, it gives them a, a nice red line to go all the way to where we need them to go, and at the end of the day we don't risk nearly as many prisoners escaping. So far we're doing real good. No problems in 19.7 days without an incident, which is resulting in a 4,700 4, bonus, which is most of the money we're making. And that can keep going up at least until 20 days as far as I'm aware. Oh, uh, let's finish this off, add in a few more prisoners, and then we might want to see about adding in a few more reform programs. Oh, and I should probably see about a couple of these things, taking care of a few of these things over here, like, oh, we have 15 prisoners up for parole. They might like to get out of here if they have uh, the opportunity to do so. Our prison population has also got large enough that it might be worthwhile to do a little bit of a drug program. Uh, we can handle 10 people, we've already got 7, so let's start one of these. Uh, it's already queued up now. We've had to make a change to our regime where we've got work-free time. This means if the prisoners want to take part in the drug program, they can. And if they're not taking part in the program, they'll go off and do something else like eh, free time. It's basically free time unless you want to do some work. Eh, I don't know why they would, but I suppose you're in prison and you're very, very bored. All right, here. Exit. There's all those prison rooms done. We're just going to seal that off from the rear. Then we can break it open at the front and we shouldn't have any worries. Oh, damn it. Wrong one. 
There. We seal it off from the rear, then we can open this up at the front to let all the prisoners access it. And then we do the same on the last section. That'll get us close to 100, but not quite. Now, I forgot about the solitary when I was designing this. Right now, we're pulling in almost seven grand a day. So at that point, I think we're just going to wall in the whole map. Why not? We can afford to do it. We'll wall in the whole map and we'll put in some extra gates here. Just to make sure that if anyone does make it out of the core area, the moment they get outside, they still have nowhere to go. That means anyone trying to tunnel out, they can't just get past the first line of walls. They have to get past the second as well. Oh, and I have to hook up those uh, security cameras. Done. We are walled in all the way around. No potential for escape, you little munchkins. And we've even got in some electric gates with der ser door servos. Why do I keep saying dar servo servos? Anyway, the door servos uh, are then connected back up to our little door control system, which is controlling all the doors in the prison. At one point, I lost control over one of them because something happened, but uh, whatever. They're all good and going right now. We've also stuck it in a parole area, but no one's shown up yet. Uh, we have 14 prisoners up for parole. Uh, do we have to get rid of the staff door? They should still attempt to come in, even if it's not set to that. Let me double check something. Ah, we had to come in here and start the parole hearings. That was it. Okay, between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. the parole hearings will start. Excellent, we can finally get through that backlog. Oh, and we should probably get visitors, allow the families to visit. There's a few too many waiting for my liking. There is some crazy little, little detail going on here. For example, they clean all the food trays, one by one. They wash them all and they make a clean stack. Then they put them all right back here on these uh, serving tables. As far as I can see, there's no problems with hiking across stuff, so you can just cram everything everywhere. Sort of like these prison cells in where we've got every single tile full of stuff. Oh, and I'm not sure how much orientation matters. For example, these people sleep with their head against this end of the wall, these people sleep with their head here, and compared to the bird pet thing, I'm not sure how much it matters. But, needs-wise, everyone's doing great. Um... Like, everything across the board is being basically taken care of. Family, recreation. Like, family, normally you need to get them, oh, what is it, lots of phones and, oh, you need to get them visiting stuff and all that. No, 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 you just get them a birdcage and it turns out they can just become family with a bird. Freaking new. Uh, recreation is pretty handy. Like, all of this stuff. Freedom actually comes down to regime. Having given them free time, just take care of their freedom needs. That's it. Alcohol we haven't touched yet, but drugs, we've got the rehabilitation thing going on, so that's taking care of that. Spirituality is covered by the prayer mats we got about the place. Literature is covered by the bookshelves in the rooms. And luxuries is taken care of by the birthing. Like, pretty much everything's been taken care of, so I'm just curious how far we can scale this up without before we start getting into the harder levels of prisoners. I mean, if you go under intake here, you also have the, pop, uh, the, the capacity to take on max security ones and super max and legendary. But considering that we're making almost 10 grand a day here... I think you'd kind of want to make yourself a nice, say, 200 population, medium security prison, and then use the money from that to start maybe getting into max security, and then super max and legendary. I'm presuming there's smaller levels. See what you're supposed to do, as far as I can guess, again, just from what I've seen so far, you want to run workshop programs, kitchen safety programs, all this stuff, and it reduces the threat level of the pawns. Then what you do is they get paroled, and because they get paroled, you get a three grand bonus when they get paroled. And when you get the paroled, that frees up a cell so a new person comes in. And every time you take a new intake, you get money as well. So you basically want to parole as many people as possible by reforming them as much as possible to make money. So I was thinking this place was going to be a sweat box of just human misery, and I'm sure you can make money that way, but this seems to be the more efficient way to make money is just a little bit of reformation, and then you know, kick them out the door and get them some new people to reform. Yeah, we'll have to see. I don't know. I'm still working on a, a few theories and assumptions. We'll see what happens when the uh, the actual threads hit the road and we see if it actually works or not. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.